Hello, welcome to SGT University. I'm Dr. Vinika Chaudhary from Faculty of Physiotherapy. Today, we will be learning about brachial plexus. Brachial plexus is a network of nerve which extend from spinal cord through the cervical axillary canal over the first rib and into the axilla. It supplies the afferents and efferent nerve fibers to the chest, shoulder, arm, forearm, and hand. Brachial plexus or plexus brachialis is a somatic nerve plexus formed by the intercommunications among the ventral rami of the lower four cervical nerves that is C5, C6, C7 and C8 and the first thoracic nerve that is T1. The plexus is responsible for the motor innervation of all the muscles of upper extremity with the exception of trapezius and levator scapular muscle. The brachial plexus supply all the cutaneous innervation of the upper limb except for the area of axilla which is supplied by supraclavicular nerve and the dorsal scapular area which is supplied by cutaneous branch of dorsal rami. The brachial plexus architecture. Brachial plexus is subdivided into roots, trunks, divisions, cords and branches. Several mnemonics can be used to remember this architecture. One of those can be really tired drink coffee black. Typically, the brachial plexus is composed of five roots, three trunk, six divisions, three cords and terminal branches. The ventral rami of spinal nerves C5 to T1 are referred to as roots of the plexus. In each segmental level from C5 to T1, the dorsal root and the ventral roots, they combine to form trunk of the spinal nerve, which give rise to dorsal and ventral rami. So the roots of the brachial plexus correspond to the ventral rami and not to the roots arising from the spinal cord. The spinal nerve that form the brachial plexus run in an inferior and anterior direction within the sulci formed by these structures. The branches of the roots. There are few branches which originate from the roots of the brachial plexus. The dorsal scapular nerve which originate from C5 root. It supplies levator scapulae, the rhomboidus major and the rhomboidus minor muscle. Another branch is long thoracic nerve which takes origin from C5, C6 and C7 roots of the brachial plexus. And the long thoracic nerve is responsible for innervation of serratus anterior muscle. The trunk. Shortly after emerging from the intervertebral foramina, the five roots unite to form three trunks. The trunk of brachial plexus passes between the anterior and middle scalenae muscle over the clavicular bone. The ventral rami of C5 and C6 unite to form the upper trunk. C7 continue to form the middle trunk and the ventral rami of C8 and T1 unite to form the lower trunk. The branches from the trunk, upper trunk give a branch called as suprascapular nerve which supply the supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscle. Division Each trunk split into an anterior division and a posterior division. These separate the innervation of the ventral and dorsal aspect of the upper limb. Interestingly, each trunk has two divisions, one anterior division, one posterior division. Have you given any thought why? So to get the answer, we have to go back to embryological development. In the cross section of developing embryo, there is a developing limb bud which have a bone in the middle and have a dorsal and ventral muscle mass. The anterior division of the brachial plexus send their axons to the ventral muscle mass which are basically the flexors and the posterior division of brachial plexus send its motor neurons to the dorsal muscle mass which are extensors and there are no branches in the division. Cords. The cords are referred to as lateral, posterior and middle cord according to their relationship with the axillary artery. The cord pass over the first strip close to the dome of the lung and continue under the clavicle immediately posterior to subclavian artery. The anterior division of the upper and middle trunk unite to form the lateral cord 
which is the origin of lateral pectoral nerve. The anterior division of lower trunk forms the medial cord, which gives off medial pectoral nerve, the medial brachial cutaneous nerve, medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve. The posterior division from each of the three trunk unite to form the posterior cord. Terminal branches of brachial plexus. These are derived from the cords. The posterior cord gives rise to axillary and the radial nerve. The lateral cord gives musculocutaneous nerve and the medial cord gives branch as ulnar nerve. And the medial and the lateral cord together form and give rise to median nerve. Now let's talk in detail about each nerve. The axillary nerve. The axillary nerve is derived from the posterior cord. The axillary nerve leaves the brachial plexus at the lower border of subscapularis muscle and continue along the inferior and posterior surface of axillary artery. The axillary nerve serve as the motor innervation to deltoid and teres minor muscle. These act at the glenohumeral joint. Sensory innervation is from the skin just below the point of the shoulder. Axillary nerve continue as the superior lateral brachial cutaneous nerve of the arm. The radial nerve. The radial nerve is derived from the posterior cord. Radial nerve continue along the posterior and inferior surface of axillary artery and innervates the extensor muscles of the elbow, wrist and fingers. Sensory innervation is from the skin on the dorsum of the hand on the radial side. Now the musculoskeletal nerve. Musculocutaneous nerve is a mixed nerve containing sensory and motor axons. The musculocutaneous nerve is derived from the lateral cord. The musculocutaneous nerve leaves the brachial plexus sheet high in the axilla at the lower border of teres major muscle and passes into the coracobrachialis muscle. It innervates the muscle in the flexor compartment of the arm and carries sensation from the lateral side of the forearm. The ulnar nerve. Ulnar nerve is derived from the medial cord. Motor innervation is mainly to the intrinsic muscles of the hand and sensory innervation to the medial that is one and a half digits that is little finger and half of the ring finger. The median nerve branch. Median nerve is derived from the lateral and medial cords. Motor innervation is to most flexor muscles in the forearm and the intrinsic muscles of the thumb that is the thinner muscles. The sensory innervation is to the lateral three and a half digits, which include thumb, index, middle, and half of the ring finger. The blood supply of brachial plexus. Blood supply of brachial plexus is based largely on the subclavian artery and its branches, but the variations exist. Generally, the vessels involved are the vertebral and the ascending in deep cervical and the superior intercostal arteries. The cord and the rootlets of the cervical nerves are supplied by the anterior and posterior spinal branches of the vertebral artery. The trunk of the plexus are supplied by the muscular branches of ascending and deep cervical arteries and superior intercostals and occasionally by the subclavian itself. Many variant forms of the brachial plexus exist, with none representing most patients. Care catalog 29 forms of brachial plexus among some 175 cadaver specimen dissected between 1895 and 1910. In the early part of the last century, one author described a total of 38 variations of the plexus. Up to 53.5% of plexus in cadaver studies possesses significant anatomical variation from the classic description of the brachial plexus. A prefixed brachial plexus or cephalic or high, it occurs when C4 ventral rami contributes to the brachial plexus. Contribution to the plexus usually come from C4 to C8. In a post-fixed brachial plexus, caudal or low occurs. A post-fixed brachial plexus occurs when T2 ventral rami contributes to the brachial plexus. Contribution to the plexus usually come from C6 to T12. So, today we have learned about the brachial plexus and its division. In the next lecture, we will be learning about the lumbosacral plexus. Till then, keep learning, keep growing. See you next time.